Bringing you the IM3 Honors 66 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Solving Rational Equations. And this one's got a puzzle that goes with it, so let's check that out. So here's our puzzle for this extra practice. This is one of those did you hear about puzzles where there's some witty phrase that they come up with here. Um, the idea is that you have to solve all these rational equations and they go in order A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Um, you just put whatever word is next to the answer in the appropriate box. So if we do question A and for example we get a negative 11 over 3 uh, then we would put the word control in box A. I don't think that is the answer, but just as an example. Uh, and they have a little bit of a hint here. Keep working, and you will hear about a college ideal. So I think it has something to do with eyes. Uh, beyond that, who knows? So let's see where this leads us. So here we go with problem A. Let's see how this one goes. So my strategy on all of these is going to be to first find the least common denominator of whatever fractions they give me and then multiply all of the numerators by that so I can cancel out those denominators. And then once I do that, I'll just solve whatever's left. Um, one thing we are going to have to look out for at the end of all these problems, if we have a variable in the denominator, we just have to make sure that none of the x values we come up with will give us zero in any of the denominators. So here we go. Uh, my LCD for this one I have a 9 for sure, and also I'm going to have an x as well to cover that x there. So multiplying each of these things by 9x, so we have 9x there, 9x there, and 9x there. Uh, so this first fraction, we've got 9's canceling out. Next one, the x's are canceling, and lastly, 9's are canceling in that last fraction. So cleaning up what we got here, we have an x times 1, which is just x. Uh, this is 9 times 1, so plus 9, equals x times 4, 4x. Subtract x from both sides, that's 3x. And divide by 3, we end up with x equals 3. Just double checking, if I plug that back into the original, I don't get 0 in any of my denominators. Uh, so it looks like 3 is the answer we need. And Let's see here. I see that right here. That's the. So we'll put a the right there. Now, one thing that is worth noting is that all of these answers have something for the answer. There's nowhere where it says undefined. Um, so un unless we get two answers as the result of doing one of these problems, I don't think we have to worry about extraneous solutions, things that zero out denominators for this puzzle. But other puzzles, you might have to worry about that. All right, here's problem B. Let's see how this one goes. So I've got 5 and 2 for the numbers in the denominator. The smallest number those both go into is 10. And then I also have an x to take care of this x here. So multiplying everything by 10x, we got first fraction, second fraction, third fraction by 10x. First fraction, 10 over 5, gives us 2. And then these x's are canceling in the second one. In the last one, we got 10 over 2, giving us 5. So we have 2 times x times 2, that's 4x, plus 10 times 1 is 10, equals 5 times x times 1, so 5x. Subtracting 4x from both sides, we end up with 10 equals x, or x equals 10, either way. Uh, so 10 is going to be cross right here, so b is cross. On this next one, finding the LCD is actually pretty quick. Uh, we've got a 4 for this 4 and also an x. And 4x covers both of these denominators. So multiplying everything by 4x, so that's the first fraction, second fraction, and also this 3, even though it's not a, a real fraction like these ones, we have to multiply everything by 4x. So over here, the 4 and the x both cancel. Next up, just the x's cancel. So we have a 5 left over on that first fraction. 4 times 1 is 4. 3 times 4x is 12x. So we have a 9 equals 12x. Dividing both sides by 12, I have 9 twelfths or 3 fourths. And 3 fourths matches up with, let's see, that's i'd there. So we'll put i'd in spot c. For this problem, we have two fractions with an equals between them. So if we wanted to, we could actually solve this by cross-multiplying, but I'm just going to use the approach I've always been using. 
namely finding the LCD and multiplying by that. So we have an N and an N minus 3 to cover everything with my LCD. So multiplying all the, the numerators by that, so N, N minus 3 for the first fraction, and the 4 also gets an N and N minus 3 next to it. Back here on the first fraction, N minus 3s cancel, and then for the other one, the Ns are the ones canceling. So we have N times 7, 7N, equals, now we have to distribute this 4, so that's 4N minus 12. Let's subtract the 4N over to the left side to get all the Ns together, so that's 3N equals negative 12. And then dividing by 3, we have N equals negative 4. That doesn't make anything zero if I plug it back in the uh, denominator. So that means negative 4 for college is going to be what we put in spot D. For this one, we're back to three fractions. Let me find the LCD first for the numbers, then the variables. So we have 5, 3, and 15. The biggest of those, 15, is actually divisible by the other two, 5 and 3. So 15 is in our LCD. And then we also need an x for these x's here. So multiplying everything by 15x, so first fraction, second fraction, and I'll also make this a, a plus with a negative 2 up there just to take care of that right away. And then finally this third fraction. Back to the first one, 15 and 5 reduced to give us a 3, and the x's cancel completely, so that's just 3 there. Next up, 15x and 3x are going to uh, reduce to give me a 5. And then finally, just the 15s cancel in that last one. So we've got 3 times 8 for that first fraction. That's 24. And then 5 times negative 2 gives us negative 10. And then finally, that's all going to equal x times 4, 4x. Cleaning up the left side, 24 minus 10, that's 14. And dividing both sides by 4, 14 over 4, I can reduce to 7 over 2. So that's our answer on this one. And I see that up here. That goes with professor. So we have a professor here. So, so far we have the cross-eyed college professor. All right, let's see where this keeps going here. On this one, looking for my LCD, let me take the biggest number, 12. Is that divisible by 4? It is. It's also divisible by 3. So 12 is in my LCD along with, I also need an A for these A's here in the denominators. So we'll multiply all my numerators by 12A now. So the first one, and I'll put a parentheses around my A plus 5 so I don't lose anything. And then the 11 gets a 12A, and the 2 over here gets a 12A as well. All right, canceling some stuff out. So the A's cancel in the first one. 12 and 4 reduces to 3. Next up, the 12's are canceling here. And over here we have the A's canceling and 12 over 3 reduces to 4. Going back now, 3 distributed to this parentheses gives us 3A plus 15. And then next we have A times 11, so plus 11A. And then finally that equals 4 times 2, or 8. Let me clean up my left side a bit. So that's 14A. And now if I uh, subtract 15 from 8, I have negative 7 over there. Dividing by 14, we have negative 7 over 14 for A, which I can reduce to negative 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2 is right here. That's a who going for F. This next problem is the first time that we've actually had to factor anything in the beginning, um, but this 2x plus 6 definitely looks like we should factor it. So I can do that by taking a 2 out of both of those. Leaves me with x plus 3. So looking at what I've got in my denominator, I definitely need a, a 2 for this 2 here, and also x plus 3, and that actually covers everything. All right, so let me multiply everything by two parentheses, x plus 3, so first fraction. Then for the next fraction, I'm going to put this as a plus negative 1, and then I'll put that negative 1 over here, along with my two parentheses, x plus 3. And then I also have to multiply all that stuff by the 1 over here. Even though it's just 1, it still counts as something that we have to multiply by to keep this equation balanced. So going back to the beginning, 2 and x plus 3 both cancel there. Next up, second fraction, only the x plus 3s cancel, and nothing cancels over on the right. 
So we've got an x for that first term, which is kind of nice. Uh, this next one, we have 2 times negative 1, so minus 2. And then over here, you might remember what we started with. It was 2x plus 6. But if you needed to, you could redistribute. So 2x plus 6. And then if I get my x's over on the left, I have negative x over there. Uh, and actually, I have negative 8 over there if I subtract the 6. I'm going to actually subtract the x over to the right side. Uh, let me do that. That'll get me x right away. Then I don't have to divide by negative 1 later. So x moves over here. 6 moves over to the left. Negative 8 is our answer. And that's given us uh, had for that one. So g is had. For this problem, I'm going to start right away by factoring this lower right expression. So I've got uh, two perfect squares, minus between them. I can use my square root plus minus shortcut. Square root of m squared is m. Square root of 25 is 5. So plus 5 and m minus 5. So my LCD at least has to have the m plus 5 and the m minus 5 for this denominator. Looking over at the uh, other denominator, we have an m plus 5, which I've already got covered in my LCD. So that's all we need for that. Let me multiply everything by m plus 5, m minus 5. So we'll do that by the first fraction in the numerator and the second fraction as well. And, and by the way, you could have cross-multiplied on this one, um, but I just like using the same approach consistently if I've done a bunch of these already. So over on my first fraction, m plus 5s cancel. Second fraction, m plus 5 and m minus 5 both cancel. Wow. So back to the first fraction. We're distributing a 1 to all that, so that's just m minus 5. Over here, all we're left with is a 2. Adding 5 to both sides, we just get m equals 7. Uh, so 7 is a no right here, so it's a no for me for h. For this problem, let me go ahead and factor that y squared minus 9. So using my plus minus square root shortcut, we have y plus the square root of 9, so plus 3, and y minus 3. That is going to be my LCD. Uh, it has everything I need for this last fraction and includes these other two denominators as well. So multiplying everything by all of that, so first fraction, second fraction, third fraction, a whole lot of writing things out here. The y plus 3s cancel over there. In the middle, it's the y minus 3s. And on the end here, both of those factors are canceling out, leaving us with y minus 3 with a 1 distributed, so just y minus 3, and then 7 distributed to y plus 3, so 7y plus 21. And then over here, we just have a negative 2. All right, so let me clean this up a bit. Uh, let me think here. I think if I subtract my 7y over from y, that'll give me a negative 6y there. And let me just combine everything over on the right side. 21 minus 2 is 19, plus the 3 that I'm going to send over there would give me 22. Dividing both sides by negative 6, I have y equals 22 over negative 6, but I can reduce that to 11 over 3, negative. And that's going to give me this one right here, control for i. For this problem, let's do a little bit of factoring on this first denominator. So uh, 2x minus 4, I can take a 2 out of that, leaving me with x minus 2. So my LCD, at the very least, needs a 2 and an x minus 2. And that x minus 2 in the LCD also covers the x minus 2 in this denominator. So let's multiply everything by two parentheses, x minus 2. So first fraction, second fraction, and then that 2 over there also gets multiplied. Back to the first fraction, x minus 2s are canceling along with the 2s. Uh, then it's just the x minus 2s, nothing else. So for my first fraction, all I'm left with is x minus 3, which is kind of nice. Uh, we have equals 2 times x, so 2x, plus, well, I've got 2 times 2, which is 4, and I have to distribute 4 to x minus 2, so that's 4x minus 8. All right, let's clean things up on the right side. So that's a 6x minus 8. And let me subtract the 6x from both sides to get x's all by themselves there. So negative 5x. Add the 3 over here. That gives me negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 gives me x equals 1. 
So one, that's going with the word over. So that's going with J. All right, problem K. Uh, let's do a little factoring on that first denominator. So I can take an X out of both of those, leaving me with X minus one. So my LCD has an X and a minus, X minus one in it. Uh, that also covers the X and the X minus one in my other fractions, so we're good to go. Let's multiply everything by the LCD. So X plus five gets an X, X minus one up there. Uh, so does the negative three, and so does the one. So we've got X and X minus one both canceling for that first one, just the X's for the middle, and for the last one we have the X minus ones going away. All right, so I have an X plus five left over for that first fraction. And now for this next one, I'm distributing a negative three to both of those. So negative three X, and then negative three times negative one is plus three. Finally, we have an equals X times one, so just X. So on the left side, I've got negative two X plus eight, all of that equals X. Let me add three over, or add two over to the right side, add two X there, so that's three X. And then dividing by three, I get X equals eight thirds. Can't reduce that, so let's just look it up. I see that goes with his, so that's what K is. All right, here we go, final problem. Uh, on this one, before I even worry about LCDs, I notice I have a minus fraction here with more than one thing in the numerator. Um, so I'm gonna distribute this negative and change this to a positive here. So I'll write this as plus, and up here I'll have negative N minus two. So then I don't have to worry about messing with that later. Now for the LCD, we definitely need an N, an N plus five, and that covers everything because we just have an N there. So multiplying everything by N and N plus five. First fraction, second fraction, and then last fraction. First fraction, the N's are canceling. Then it's the N plus fives. And then finally, the ends again. First fraction, we're going to have to foil this out. So we have n squared plus 3n plus 5n plus 15. Next fraction, the n gets distributed. So this is a negative n squared. And then we have a minus 2n. And then finally, over there, we just have n plus 5 uh, after the equals. So let me get everything over in one place here. Uh, so let's see, we have n squared, negative n squared. Those actually cancel out. Then we have 3n plus 5n is 8n. And then uh, we got minus 2n gives us a 6n. 15 stays where it is. And I'll leave the n plus 5 over here for now. But now let me start moving things around. Let me subtract n from both sides. That gives me 5n on the left. Subtract 15, that gives me negative 10 on the right. And divide by 5, so n equals negative 2. And just quickly double checking, that doesn't give me 0 in any of my denominators. Um, so let me just pick that one. That's pupils going there. All right, so the solution to this puzzle, did you hear about the cross-eyed college professor who had no control over his pupils? Well, that just kind of seems in poor taste. I get it. But I, th I don't know. I feel like I we could have come up with something a little nicer. But there it is. We got some math practice in at least. Uh, Till next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.